everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this a really pretty easel chocolate box. So that goes up like so. So just like an easel card, if I just pop it on the side there. And then at the top here, this opens up and it will fit a chocolate bar or anything else you want. But I've done, this is the third chocolate bar one I've done now and I'll link the other ones. I'll do a little playlist for those because I've done the Easter one, which was really popular. And then I've done the one that actually looked like a chocolate bar, which you all liked as well. But this one is another card within a box. So the Easter one is the same. That one opens up like a normal card. This one I thought I would do in the easel style. So I have seen similar ones where people do little drawers and stuff as well, which is nice, but I thought I want to do it with chocolate because I like to give chocolate. So <laughs> I just bring up the top here and you can see I've used the Dovecraft holographic cardstock, which you can see catching the light. And this is using the first edition Making Memories, which I'll show you in a moment. I've done all the decoration. I've done a lot of this off camera as well for the video today because yeah, once I talk you through what it is, it's easy to do yourself. But I just want to show you the box and the little easel mechanism there. So let's crack on. Okay, so I've done everything there. So this is my topper. So I've already done this piece. This is my easel bit that's going to pop up. And I've just gone for a different colour with the flowers. I've done blue and my box is going to be this pinky colour. So for the leaves, I used that plate there, which was the ivy plate by John Next Door. I've been using this a lot lately and it's, it's being used on a lot of my Christmas projects. So I will... Oh, it's stuck to the magnet so strong. I will uh, link that one as always as I link everything below. For the sentiment this time, so the birthday, I just used the birthday from the birthday words, the bright rosa. I'm always using this so I thought I'm going to pull these out a bit more. So I just used the birthday and then I stamped the happy and heat embossed it. Um, I just grabbed one of my stamps, just a small one there. I just like that the difference in font, having the two together was just a bit much on this project, but they do look nice together. And then also I use the flowers from the flower border die set. So I've used them to make those lovely border cards and I've just started to use these a little bit more on their own. And you just really get to see all that detail in the center of the flower. You've got so many layers to it, even those little silver pieces, that's a separate bit. And um, yeah, I just think it looks really nice. You can see there in the blue and in the red. Okay, so that's what I've used there. The sentiment is from the Christina Griffiths. So again, it's that happy birthday. It's the one I keep pulling out, but it just works with so many things. That one was a Dovecraft one. So that one says, I hope your birthday is full of rainbows and sunshine. Again, if I can find that one, I'll link it because that one's a bit older, but that one's still available. And there's the paper pad. So that's the Making Memories. Beautiful colours, really, really nice. Good for Valentine's, but you can use it all year round as I'm showing you now. Okay, so for the box, you want a piece of, this is nine and three quarters by nine and one eighth. Okay, so first of all, along the nine and three quarter side, we're gonna score at four and one eighth of an inch. Four and three quarters. Eight and seven eighths. And nine and a half. So you should have a small quarter inch tab just here, okay? Then I'm going to rotate it and now along the nine and one eighth side, you want to score at half an inch. One and one eighth of an inch. And eight and a half. Okay, and then for the easel piece, you want a piece of eight by four. Yeah, eight by four. Along the eight inch side, you want to score at three and five eighths of an inch. And seven and three eighths. Okay, and then you'll have this five eighths of an inch piece here. And that's the bit that we're going to tuck inside the box. So I'm just going to fold and burnish those. Okay, and then the topper piece is just over four because this is going to sit over this piece here. So you just want to check, but it's going to sit over the top there and you can see that's going to form the easel piece. And then the width is the same as well. So this is seven and three eighths because once you take that piece off, that becomes seven and three eighths as well. Okay, then the piece on top, you just want to drop down. So three and three three and three quarters by, it will be seven and one eighth. 
Okay, so what I'll do is have the quarter inch tab on your left hand side and we'll work along our base first of all. So in this bottom left hand corner you'll have a tiny little kind of rectangle. Okay, just remove that one completely and then cut up the next score line and that will give you that little tab. Go along to the centre and you should have two other small short score lines. Just cut them up to the first score line and then that will be it. Okay. With these little squares, just go in now and just take a wedge off of them. Okay, and just make sure you've got no score lines on those longer pieces. You can always tidy it up once you've folded it all together, but try and do it all now. But that's how you want the bottom. Okay, next you want to turn it all around and this bottom left large rectangle section. So first of all, if you just cut down all those other score lines to the second score line. Okay, so all those lines I've just cut down past the first one down to the second. This little one here, just remove again completely. And what you can do is just take off a wedge from each end of that tab over there. Then with these pieces here, you want to remove the top kind of rect rectangle piece. It won't quite be a square, all right? And again, take wedges off of that. If you've made these boxes before, you'll, you'll kind of know what you're doing. Okay, then you'll have these pieces here. This whole section here, we're going to remove. Okay, so I'm going to grab my longer scissors. I'm just going to pop them in there and just take out that whole section. Okay, so if I lie this down, in fact, just before we do that, this top piece here, you just want to take, not a lot, because this is going to be your locking piece so you want it to make sure it kind of wedges in you can always take it more away if it's too tight but for the minute just take a little bit away okay so that's what you should have you've got your quarter inch tab here you should have tabs at the either end of that set next section which is your side piece and this will become the front the top of our box and you'll have another side with this with little tabs either end and then this will become the back and it will have these two pieces because the top one is the lock and that's going to be like the, the top of the box and this is all the base. Okay, so next we want to glue this together. So you want to do the side piece first. So I'm just going to run some glue along that quarter inch tab. And if you fold the side piece over as well as that quarter inch tab and then just bring the whole side of the box, it will all line up. And then just fold it across, just so it kind of gets used to being in that shape. And now you'll have your case, your chocolate box, okay? Now you want it so that that join is on the bottom left, because that means it's on, it's on the back. And this is going to come up and fold inside. And like I said, you want it to wedge in. See, that wedges in really nicely, it's not going to pop out. Then the bottom here, this is the top, so you want to fold that one down last. So fold the bottom in first, add some more glue. Fold in each of your sides. A bit more glue on the tabs and then fold over that one there. Now if you've got anything overhanging you can cut it away but mine's fine so you should be okay. Then if you open up this end again, just grab a ruler and you can just push down the base there. Okay, and then we'll do that back up again. Actually no, leave that open now. So that's all ready. Next, you've got this piece here which you've folded, which you've scored and burnished. And this piece is going to slip in the top here. Okay, and then if you fold that all in, fact you have to stick it first so it won't be easy to do so what you want to do is on the inside piece you want to add some glue and then I'm just popping it in the top there and then fold it over make sure it's in the center of the lid there because this is four and one eighth this is four okay so it's just just sits within that top of the box Okay, and now I can fold them in and that one, and that should wedge even more, and that, look, you've got such a nice finish. So I really like the way that this has come together because it's completely concealed. 
and that's the easel piece done. So next you want to get this bit. So decorate it first is a bit easier because you're now going to stick that on there and it's going to cover the whole thing. But I need to take a little bit off here. So I'm just going to go up on a very, very slight angle. It's such a small amount, just a little slither, but it just, there we go, just hides that white behind. And so all you want to do for this bit is just stick this bottom half down. So I'm just adding glue just to the bottom square. And then sit that over the top. You can lay it all down if that's easier. You've got lots of places to write your message as well. I didn't really talk about that. You can have it inside here, which is probably what I'll do. You can have it here, or you can have it on the very back. Or you can have it on that, or here. <laughs> so there's so many spaces. So it's a good one, again, if you've got maybe colleagues and people like that to sign, because you could easily put a nice gift card in here as well. Okay, so now we've got that effect. So now we need our stopper. So I've already got this piece here. So I've put foam adhesive under the top one and also on the bottom one here. You can have anything you want. You could have flowers, hearts, anything, as long as it's raised up so that the this piece can wedge itself against it and create that easel. Okay. I'm gonna bring this one up. I'm going to have it about there. Okay, if I just bring that up, you can see now how nice that looks. Now I need to put some hearts on there because I forgot to do that, and I've got some hearts there, but I've put that all away, so I have to pull that out and do it later. But if I just bring them up, they're a bit hard to hold, but you can see. How lovely do they look? I think they've got such a nice profile. So it's, you know, card and gift in one always go down well. And I use these kind of things a lot. And they're just nice as little token gifts as well. So yeah, I think it looks really, really good. And I love these papers. I love all of the, just all the shininess from the cardstock and the, the glitter in the little jewels that I've used. And yeah, I'm really pleased with it. So I hope you like it. I hope you make them. Hope you share them over on Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group. And yeah, let me know what you think. So give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Subscribe to my channel to get to see more. And I'll be back again soon with another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.